there he is, ready to go, ready to rock and roll. How you doing, my man? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm good, Big O. Looking forward to this bye week. Uh, everybody gets a rest, including the beat guys. So you're not doing anything for this whole week? You're just uh, hanging out, just being a slacker? Is that, what, is that what's going on? Just slacking well, around? Yesterday I posted snap conclusions and the tape don't lie on the Palm Beach Post's website. I might post something tomorrow looking ahead to the Dolphins' chances to get a home playoff game at Hard Rock Stadium. But, yeah, other than that, I'm going to shut it down. I'm trying to talk my wife into going on one of those three- or four-night cruises. I'm not sure she's in yet. All right, so I got a question. Why aren't you on camera? Next week, yeah, I'll come back. You were on camera with Ruthie this weekend. Yeah, that was the first thing I did. Yeah, it was the first thing I've done. Come on. You know, we got to get on. You, was if you can get on camera, we got to get you on camera, bro. It's kind of lame to have the damn dot there. If you're healthy yeah, enough, was, what? You didn't, you didn't shower yeah. today or something? What's going on? You didn't shave? What's the deal? Well, definitely, well, I definitely haven't showered and shaved. But, um, yeah, I got me and Hal Habib are going to bring back the Palm Beach Post videos next week, too. So we can all come back on the on uh, on camera together. Oh, with, with Hal, too? We get a bonus? Hal's well, going to join us? No. I, you know, my primary job is actually for the Palm Beach Post, and so Hal and I have not done any videos this year. So we're uh, going to bring back uh, our that's... videos Ah, your Starting video. Next week. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm in a happy mood. Uh, uh, ALI just hit two pennies now. Just freaking amazing. Ooh, and it went down to 1966, the year I was born. See, there's signs all over, folks. ALI. Anyway, you have no idea what I'm talking about, Joe. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Just, just let it all go. Um, Tua is now the only quarterback in the NFL. That is undefeated in game started and finished after last night and the loss by Hertz. Your thoughts on that now? Yeah, I mean, I've always thought that win-loss record is a relevant statistic, certainly not the most important one when it comes to quarterback play, but uh, it, is, it is impressive when you talk about the value of the player. Uh, very small sample size uh, for Teddy Bridgewater and Skylar Thompson. But you saw that the offense wasn't operating the same way that it is with Tua, and you wouldn't expect it to. The entire thing is designed around Tua's strengths. And, uh, yeah, it's fun to watch, man. Credit to everybody. Tua, Mike yeah. McDaniel, the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach, Armstead, Hill, Waddle. It's joy to watch, man. It's been just so much fun. Did you see that uh, pretty cool stat from Ryan Smith from PFF about Tua's throws and uh, yaks and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I know that the, the, the national sort of lazy perception is that it's all yards after catch for Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. And, and there's no doubt that Tua Tungavailoa is throwing the football in the air farther this year. And uh, it's, I'm glad to see that he can do it. I'm glad to just see that he can do it successfully. And uh, really, you need to be able to do that uh, at least occasionally to uh to win big time in the nfl and tua has really improved his uh his arm strength his velocity and his deep ball throws yeah uh it's 37.7 percent of tua's passing yards this season after the catch the lowest percentage for any qb through 10 weeks with a minimum of 125 dropbacks so you know, it's not all about yak with him like a lot of people want to make it out to be. And I thought it's it, it's just kind of cool to watch him knock down all the narratives that were created when they actually didn't even watch the young man really play because he didn't really have anything around him, you know. So I just kind of like that he's kind of, you know, shut all that stuff down. And there aren't – the only thing you could, I think, lean on now is just the injury history. And that's it. Yeah, I was I was watching Keyshawn Johnson else, to even yeah, I was everything watching else Keyshawn was Johnson. Go ahead. What did you I say? I was watching Keish I was watching Keyshawn Johnson and Stephen A. Smith on oh, uh, ESPN this morning and, and uh and neither one believes that Tua is a top five quarterback in the NFL. Um, you know, uh durability was cited, 
uh, which, you know, it's fair. Let's, let's hope that Tua can stay healthy, obviously. Uh, you know, sample size was cited. Uh, you know, that argument's getting a little tougher now, but it is true that there are a lot of games to play. We'll see where Tua finishes statistically. And then also the ability to uh, play well in, in a cold weather or wet weather uh, environment. Uh, you know, so, you know, Tua's got a few more dragons to slay, but there aren't many left. No, I uh, I don't think he has any dragons to slay except now just um you know uh time now. Now he's got to just do it for a length of time now yeah. is what he's got to do. Uh, injuries I think it's kind of the answer is there. Just get rid of the ball, kid. That's where all your major injuries have pretty much come from from you holding the ball 4 or 5 seconds and he's actually doing it. Uh Joe that you know, the last couple of weeks, we've watched him slide. We've watched him throw it out of bounds. We've watched him, you know, throw it away. So it's actually pretty cool that he's finally getting it. Because if not, bro, you're not going to have a career. You'll be out of football within a couple of years here if you're going to take a pounding. You you just so can't what would be it. what would be more which statistic would be more surprising uh, if I had told you that the, these would both would be true through ten games? Fact one. Tua Tungavaloa leads the NFL in passer rating, okay? Fact two, and this is a little skewed because it was two-plus games with injury, but it's still interesting and it is still a fact. 34 NFL quarterbacks have been sacked more times than Tua Tungavaloa this season. He's only been sacked eight times. And right. There's a lot of factors for this. Improved offensive line play, improved coaching, better scheme, Tua getting rid of the ball, uh, making some good decisions. but that is a pretty cool statistic. 34 quarterbacks sacked more. Of course, there's only 32 teams. So so which would be more surprising to you, honestly? Neither one of them. You know he was the least <laughs> sacked You know he was the least sacked quarterback last year. Least sacked. Okay. Did you know that? So he was he was number 1 in in fewest sacks per pass attempt. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. Yeah, okay. I didn't look, know. Look, look, if, if, if I if I'm off, I'm off by one. Maybe he's two. Okay. He was one of the least sacked quarterbacks with the worst offensive line and no running game last year. Yeah, I mean, obviously the scheme was. And, and by, and by you know, the way, and by the way, seven yards. So by the way, who was the most sacked quarterback with a line well, and a running game? Huh? Well, all those all those guys are sacked a lot more. Burrow, Herbert, all those guys. No, they're all sacked a lot more. Who was number no. one? Who was yeah. the most sacked? Most sacked with the line and with two running backs. You ready? Who was the most? Yeah. Tannehill, number one. Number one with a bullet in your heart. Number one. He had Derrick Henry for a short time, got injured. Foreman took over, who was a beast, had a hell of a line. All right. Still had A.J. Brown. Was the most sacked quarterback in the NFL because he has no pocket awareness. Never has, never will. Kind of like listen. We up. like we yeah. We like the the we like the low sack totals for various reasons, right? You know, you oh, but I'm just artists. saying. You asked, no, 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 right? Okay. No, no, no. I know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just also point out that it is true that you know some sacks are worse than others, right? You know, did the sack take you out of field goal range? Uh, did the sack take you have an opportunity to go for it on fourth and one from the forty two? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, listen, when it's third and twelve, and you're going to punt anyway, you know sometimes actually, you know just uh, taking the sack is not a bad play. So it varies, but yeah, but it's good. This is good. This is good that the Tua is throwing the ball down the field more, and yet he's not taking a lot of sacks. Yep. No. Um. Let me see where it's at here. Let's see if I have it. If I can pull it up. From last year, I'm trying to find it now. Maybe some, maybe Sean can do it for me. But um, all right. So the other thing that I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about, what do you do with kicker, bro? Uh, I know he said the right things, but then he kind of the coach I'm talking about. At the end, he said, "Well, we still do our due diligence on every position on the team." What, what are your, what would you do, and what do you think they're going to do? So um, if it was Brian Flores, his butt would be cut. Uh, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> 
It's true. That's a good one. I so forgot about Mike that. McDaniel is a, you know, positive glass <laughs> half full optimistic kind of dude. And, yeah, you know, what, what Danny Crossman – and Danny Crossman has not had a good year as a special no. teams coach. The, all the units have been terrible. But I, I, what he says is true. I, I, I literally, Big O, uh, stood behind the goalposts on the second floor of the Dolphins indoor facility and watched Jason Sanders kick the ball right to me, kick after kick after kick after kick. So it's not physical. It's obviously mental. And so I think it's like anything else, you know, special team from my, throughout my career, I've seen special teams guys, whether it's a kicker, a punter or a returner get cut after they cost the team a game. So that hasn't happened yet. So if he costs the team a game, his butt will be gone. By the way, uh, Tua in sack percentage, he was, you know, good, but he was behind Brady Allen, Mahomes, Herbert Cousins, Prescott, Stafford in sack percentage. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth. I'm surprised that well percentage Herbert, or Herbert, but, but sack what's percentage. what sack right. percentage. What, what was the total sacks? Well he also That's was it. he also missed gains and was benched last year, right? So sack percentage is a is a yeah. more relevant stat. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's fair. That's actually very fair. That uh, you're right. Sack percentage is probably better. I, and that said, I did use the I did use he the sack total in my in my earlier question. But listen, it's all good. It's all good. The guy yeah. had a, a, he had twenty sacks last year. Mm -hmm. Twenty sacks total last year in his games played. That's pretty effing good, dude. For a crap ass line that he played behind, that's pretty and, freaking. And good. so I want I want our our listeners here on the High Jinx Sports Bar and Grill and Boca uh, Report to do me a favor and go check out the tape. Don't lie. I had not I had not done it this year. It's the first one. Watch the Thank Browns you. tape back. It's a and, good segment. No, listen, though. it was it was hard. It was hard for me to to honestly just kind of focus on the film with my eyes. So I did it last night. And you always say to me, Joe, what jumped out on the tape? Don't lie. And uh, Brandon Shell and Robert Jones and Robert Hunt. Okay. We know that Connor Williams and Toronto Armstead are playing well, but those guys are throwing people to the ground. They go, they're throwing them to the ground. They're physical. They're tough. They're opening huge holes in the running game. This offensive line is playing better as a group than anyone could have anticipated. And 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 I know that Mike McDaniel said Austin Jackson is a starting right tackle, and I'm sure at some point he'll get a chance to go back in there. But right now, man, Shell and Jones, they're getting it done. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's no way you um, make any changes when Austin Jackson – I know he was active, but, I mean, if he's ready to play, you know, 100%, he he has to sit and, and wait for somebody to slip up at this point in time because the as you said in the tape um that they that was their best game this year man that was really really good the, way the dolphins are fortunate if you have austin jackson and greg little and they even had a couple of other guys activated last week that can play tackle keon Smith, Smith, I think his name Smith. might be. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know about the Greg yeah. Little one. You're getting, you're getting a little, you're getting, you, you're using that. Well, no, term. no, okay. no, no. I'm saying as a, as a, as a backup, as an emergency reserve. Oh, it's not God. bad. I know. Yeah. I, I like Austin Jackson as my emergency reserve. <laughs> Greg Little, uh, Greg Little doesn't convince me. Uh, he's been hard to watch, man. Hey, listen, Brandon Shell, dude. I mean, I. I don't know if he'll get the love for it, but Chris Greer deserves love for executive of the year. And I talked about this in the post game show. You're 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 going around. You're going okay. So wait a minute. So before the game starts, oh Teddy Bridgewater got a a swelling knee. You know, okay. So Skyler gets elevated. You do not flinch as a Dolphin fan because you like what you've seen from Skyler. And then you watch the game, and here's Brandon Shell, a guy you found off the street playing right tackle for you. And here's a guy that you've hung on to for the last two years and Robert Jones playing left guard for you. And here's Bethel Johnson. Or is it Bethel or is it what is it? Uh, Justin, Justin Bethel. Bethel. Here's Justin Bethel Cater running back there making plays. 
here's Cater Kohu putting away his lightsaber, making plays that we found in Division Two undrafted. You, you start looking around all over that team. And and here's uh, Wilson Jr., who we just traded for. And here's Chubb, who we just traded for. This effing front office has done an amazing job to think of where you were for the last two years as a friend, where you've been the last 25 years. And you've never come close to designing a team like this in just an offseason where you find everything. You got a front office that found your franchise quarterback and your backup quarterback the following year. I mean, that shit is crazy, Joe. I don't think people so, are appreciating enough what Chris Greer, Marvin Allen, and Reggie McKenzie are doing behind the scenes, my brother. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously perceptions change on a – you know, sometimes week to week basis in the NFL, but really it's more fair to evaluate things on a year to year basis. And it's funny, I saw a picture of Chris Greer that one of our photographers took and he had a big smile on his face. And I was thinking, wow, he's probably feeling much better about the state of his franchise right now than he was a year or two or three ago. And obviously there was the tear down. But yeah, I mean, the perception of Chris Greer was like, yeah, you know, he's he's been okay, but he you know, there has, it's been average. And uh, certainly the, the perception now is that, uh, well, you know what, that Tua Tungvaloa pick doesn't look so bad. And you know what, uh, that Laramie Tunsil trade has worked out pretty good. And, 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 and the Jalen Waddle pick, you know what I mean? There was a lot of thoughts of, well, how do you pass on Kyle Pitts? Well, all right. Clearly Jalen Waddle over Kyle Pitts was the right move. So yeah, he's looking a lot better. Um, and by the way, so are you saying that when you asked me, would I take Herbert or Tua, and I kept telling you Tua, that doesn't sound that crazy anymore to you? Well, no, I mean, obviously the statement sounds less crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's all right. Last year but, I was telling you know, folks. But- I don't know if I told this to you last year, but I said this in the in the wake of all the crap that was going on. I said, if you put two in Minnesota, they're in the playoffs. If you put two in the Rams, they win the Super Bowl. If you put two uh, in Tennessee, he takes them way farther than Tannehill ever would. So how's that statement sound from last year? Who are you taking, two or Kirk Cousins? Who are you taking, two or Tannehill? Do you think Tua can do exactly what, what this guy did? Uh, in in the Super Bowl, Matt Stafford did Matt Stafford do anything that Tua couldn't do in the Super Bowl? What do you think? No, I'm just look. I was, I was while you were talking, uh, I was looking back at some of the articles I wrote in 2019. Dolphins should send signal to Tua. We still want you, uh, Stephen. Ro- for Stephen Ross, this seems like the ideal moment to send a message to Tuscaloosa. We still want you, Tua. We still need you, Tua. So, you know, I was all in back in 2018, and I'm glad. Yeah, but you got to off. To, uh, you got off. Up to the expectation. You're like Omar. Omar was drooling mm-hmm. at the press conference at the no, combine. Listen, looking listen, up at Tua. Listen, I have and, to write. And he needed a bib and to, all that. And, and, then, and then the first sign of, of, uh, of adversity, he got off. Like you. you. You all got off, like in the first sign of adversity. And, you know, I tried to explain to you all. He well, I'm not a fan. Problem. I'm a journalist. So I have to Everything. write what I see. If I, I get I'm that. not a fan, I'm a journalist. I have to write and say what I'm seeing at the moment. I, and, and what I'm not, and and so I was only saying it as a fan. Really, is that what I was saying as a fan, or was I just right that it wasn't him, that it was all flow, it was was around him and Tannenbaum and all these messes that's been around for Greer and for him. It's kind of the 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 the. The people that were in the way of Greer and Tua are gone, and now they they get to do their jobs, and they're doing they're excelling at their jobs. To me, that's Here's what, what I wrote in 2019. Saying. Do not overthink this. Do not fall into the trap of believing too much of Tua's success is a product of Alabama's scheme and team Amen. Is so far superior to their opponents. So listen, you you write what you believe at the at the minute at the moment. I mean, listen, I, you know, I, I'm not. You and I have a little bit different roles, right? You would agree with that, right? I mean, a little bit different roles, right? 
Oh, really? Call it like you see it. It's just you and I see it differently. You didn't, like when I told you I take two over Herbert, I'm not being a fan, bro. Did I believe in Brian Tannehill ever? Did I ever tell you any quarterback in the last 20 years was the real deal for the Dolphins? Hell, did I ever tell you that a Dolphins team was the real deal in the last 20 years? No, dude. <laughs> I kept slamming general manager after general manager and coach after coach. Funny how I don't slam this general manager and funny how I don't slam this quarterback or this team right now. Maybe it's because I know this team is actually real compared to the shit that they've gone through for 20 years. Joe, all they oh, ever listen, had I, was I feel back. Mm -hmm. All they ever had was a running back, Lamar Smith, Jay Ajayi, or Ricky Williams, dude. They never had a quarterback. What, they have Pennington? who was a game manager on his best day. He was smart. He didn't throw away the football. Okay, that if you don't throw away the football and you, and you don't commit penalties, you're going to be in a crap ton of games in the NFL. It's pretty simple. And Pennington... 2019, is Tua a winner? Check. Is Tua a leader? Check. Tua has accuracy, charisma, intelligence character that brian flores and all of south florida craves tua doesn't just have the it factor he is it all right so listen so now he is living up to everything i and the dolphins thought he could be in 2019 he is an mvp candidate he yes, is he a pro he is a pro bowl candidate he is he's getting it done and i sure hope it continues it's gonna be a lot of fun the narrative at the beginning of the season was all oh, these first four games are going to test the Dolphins. So they went three and one. So now that you know what they are through 10 games, when to is healthy, is there a game that they cannot win on the rest of the schedule now? No. Isn't I mean, it interesting? Realistically, right? re realistically, you would take four and three, which would put you at 11 and six and get you in the playoffs. Okay. I don't know if that wins the AFC East, but you know, I think I I like many predicted ten and seven before the season. So it looks like the Dolphins are likely to surpass that. I thought that the Vegas odds being eight point five or nine were too low, just too yes. low. I, I don't know what, how I don't you know. I think it was skepticism about McDaniel and skepticism about Tua. And Big O, I want your listeners to look up what I wrote on Sunday off of that Browns game that the Dolph I can finally officially call it, that the Dolphins have the right long-term answer at coach and quarterback and that nothing matters more. I'm with you. By the way, what do you think about Cater Kohu's celebration finally? What, Co oh, you mean Tyreek? No, Cater Kohu. Do you, what do you, do you, do? You, you, you wow he you has not celebration what did he, ha he has not seen darth cater you have not no you got to do a you got to do a story on this bro this is why you come on this show also because you get some stuff that you don't get anywhere else darth cater baby check it out boom he makes the play lightsaber boom put it away oh uh. Someone told me someone, someone on social media said he doesn't like that. So that must have been an inaccurate statement. He does like and Darth Cater. Boom. Of course he got likes Darth Cater. He just put away the goddamn lightsaber. And okay, he did it awesome. twice glad, in the game. I'm glad he's embracing it. Of course. I got a little worried when he gave up the first, you know, he gave up the pass on the first play, and then he was lights out, locked down. Cater's my guy. That's my dude. That he's I mean, good. I was the first guy to write about the Ivory Coast. All right. Yeah. Makes me think of the World Cup. Is the Ivory Coast in the World Cup? Are we going to watch that? Where are we going? Let's go to Hijink Sports Bar and Grill. Ooh. The U.S. versus Wales on Monday, November 21st. That's next Monday like at 2 p.m. Like Who's going to go? I, I like guarantee you. Uh, by the, the way, I will, I will be at Hijink. I'm going to go. I'm going to go over to Hijinks on Friday, by the way. So. Okay. Maybe I'll meet you. I'll be there. If I'm not on a boat. I'll be there to hang out. I'll be there to hang out a little bit and uh, hang out with the manager and uh, and go check out the okay. bar Can and I stuff come? like that. Of course. Well, I mean, you okay. you go there all the time, but yeah, I want to go. I I don't like talking about anything that I don't know about, and I'm not big on that. I won't represent a product that I don't know. So uh, are you going to get I, the I, wings that I told you about? Yes, I'm, I'm definitely going to get the wings. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to go with the wife, and uh, we'll we'll go up there to hijinks oh. on Friday. And uh, hang out a little bit and go check out the bar. You know what I mean?
So yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. And at the last uh, time there was now a, you a have, women's now you have a story to now you have a story to write. By the way, okay. The last time there was a women's uh, World Cup, uh, me and Safed Dean and Josh Tolentino. Josh is now in Philadelphia. Yeah, went over and uh, and watched watched that at hijinks. And I can tell you that uh, everyone was wearing some uh, special World Cup outfits. For sure. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, we I used know. to have a Tolentino Tuesday used to be on the program uh, when he was, when he was well, in well, town. Let me tell you one more thing. Tolentino I want to tell you Tuesday. one more thing I wrote about Tua so that I can get off that receipts list. In 2019, Chris Greer has a responsibility to the organization and to himself to draft the quarterback that he clearly envisions leading the Dolphins to championship glory. He cannot hedge, for if he loses, there will be no excuses. I crushed Justin Herbert back then. And you know what? Some of the stuff you've said about how he hasn't done quite as well in clutch situations and fourth quarters, uh, you're seeing it this year. And, you know, I, I, I give you a little bit of credit, but we'll see how it plays out. We got, we got more George. games to play. Jeff George, Philip Rivers. I've seen this before, bro. He's an I've extraordinary talent. He's an I, I, extraordinary I, I, thank talent. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, he, he is. is. But that's that's not that's, necessarily a and that's where and that's where it ends. He's not a great quarterback. He's an extraordinary talent. He if I had to design a quarterback physically, it would be Justin Herbert, bro. It would be exactly, and, and, we, like and we do have to say, he, but I don't know if in all all his, he is he is missing all his receivers and all his linemen. So if we're going to say that it was unfair to knock Tua when he was playing with nobody, no, they weren't you know, saying we do have that. To at least mention, no, 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 um, no, no, no. I was saying that they weren't oh, okay. saying that. Okay, oh, okay. everybody else, including yourself, you got off the bandwagon that you were on in 2019. And you you thought he was part of the problem with it all, and it wasn't that is his fault. And as for Justin Herbert, what I don't know about him that I have never seen in Oregon or here, my brother, is El Corazón. I don't know if El Corazón can actually perform at the highest level in key moments. I don't speak a lot of Just Spanish, like, but I know that one. Listen, that I, I know right. Corazón. I, I, I don't yes. speak a lot of Spanish, but I know that one. I know I, you I would go. know that one. Everybody knows that one. And I'm thumping my chest here at the same time to kind of tell you that I don't know if he has heart. I don't know if he has balls. That's my Listen, problem I, with him. I've never – I never watched – dude, think about this. What Oregon game do you remember him slinging around and, and, and beating people and bringing them back against a big team? There's none. And that's my problem. When I see Joe Burrow, I watched you at LSU. When I see when I see two, I watched you at Alabama at the highest level with the best conference, and you beat the best talent. You showed me you have balls. And then when I watched him the last two years, I love what I saw from Tua because he didn't have anything, and he handled it like a freaking champ. He never pointed fingers. He didn't do an Aaron Rodgers. He didn't do anything, bro. He he just played his game. He stayed straight. He didn't point fingers, and he was tough throughout the whole thing. And you um, could he's tell healthier. that. He, yeah. He's, he's, he's healthier. Yeah. He's now. healthier. He's physically stronger. He's in a better scheme with better coaching, yes. better teammates. He's living up to expectations. As Peter King, the noted journalist, said, let's enjoy the ride. Let's, en let's not forget to enjoy the ride because there's a lot of anger and frustration and all that. So let's not forget the part about enjoying the fun parts. Hey, let me know what time you're over at Hijink Sports Bar and Grill and Booker. It's I will. Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a text when I'm on my way. I'll send you a text when I'm on my way. You'll have an hour and a half because it, it's taking <laughs> an hour and a half to get there. All right. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll you, reach bro. out to you on Friday, my brother. All right. Appreciate you. All right. See you. All right. You got it. There you go. The great Joe Shad. And I'll send you some video from Hijinks. That has to be the best looking sports bar in South Florida. This is the big old show.